The day is here. I'm possibly dumping my Canon R5. Oh, people are going to be so excited that the switching videos are going to end. You finally I, have to make a choice. Have I truly been flip-flopping or not? Oh, Emma. genuinely. You genuinely cannot decide. It's time to pick a camera. Today I'm going to go through everything. Why I'm switching the pros and cons of each camera. The Alpha 1, the R5, and then the Nikon Z9. And then I'm going to answer your questions. You compiled a bunch of Q&As from the comments. A lot of angry questions for you. That's pretty scary for me. But first, we want to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. You need to get your own websites, guys, because I've been trying to hire you to do things or buy your food, and it takes me right to Facebook, and it looks like garbage. If you want your very own Squarespace that looks professional and clean and organized, where I can find all of your wares and your talents, go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea and use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. That's C-H-E-L-S-E-A. It's really easy to do. Thanks, Squarespace. Okay, Chels, first, why are you switching systems again? It was only a couple of years when you switched from Sony to, wait. Okay, let's go back in time. When you started, you were a Canon shooter. You started yes. with a little Canon Rebel, and then you went 5D, 5D Mark II, 5D Mark III, and then suddenly you switched to the Nikon D850 DSLR, the best, best DSLR, DSLR of all time. And then you went Sony. You decided you liked the Sony a7R three. Yeah. You didn't love the Sony a7R four. You did not switch. Mm -mm. But then Canon launched the R five, and, and you I loved was it. There. The animal eye detect worked mm -hmm. so great. You switched to, to Canon again, all the way back. But and then, then Sony launched the a one, and you didn't love it. You mm -mm. stayed with the R five. But then some firmware updates came out, and you tried <laughs> it again, and you really did like the a one. But then Nikon also launched the Z nine, <laughs> and it was pretty cool. So you decided you might switch, and you tested. R5, the incumbent, versus the new Sony, updated Sony A1, versus the new Nikon Z9. I've been on a roller coaster and I love taking you with me. Let me tell you, I don't actually like switching cameras because I'm a creature of habit, but this is actually my job. So I don't expect everyone to switch all the time. I just want to stay on top of things. I like to try new tech. I like to stay familiar with new systems. Yeah, and financially, we own this gear anyway for the sake of testing it. Like it's already a business expense yes. that we've written off. So I it's sitting well. locked away in our safe. You might as well pull it out. Yeah, and then I like to help others choose. That's why I make the video. I like to walk you through it. And plus, I liked your... A1, and I wanted to see if it could beat my R5, so that's why I'm here. Let's do a recap, because I've tested travel and landscape. I tested portraits, and wildlife was my final video, so let's talk about who won what. Let's start with the landscape and travel video. We went to Acadia, Maine, and you got to pack all of them away into your bag. I started regretting this video series when I had to carry all of that gear, but I did it. The R5 won, let's cut to the chase. It was great, I had the fully articulating screen, mm -hmm. which I really appreciate it. It has the least expensive body, the most versatile and bright screen. It has the best user interface, in my opinion, and it has a really compact 70 to 200 f2.8. I like when a lens is small and mighty, like me. But you were real mad when it ran out of batteries, which has been a pro repeating problem. They can fix it. Second place, the Sony Alpha 1. It's the most expensive. It has the limited tilt screen. It only does flippy. It doesn't do fully articulating. The user interface is way better. They improved it so much, and it's very good, but it's not as good as the Canon. You know, when you're using the back screen, I like to be able to touch the screen on the Canon to adjust the settings without okay. having to go to the dials. You mm -hmm. can't do that on a Sony. Uh, it has the best EVF, though. It looks amazing. The electronic you viewfinder, the yes. part you hold your eye up to. I think it has the best lens selection. Yeah, they really do, because they've been doing the mirrorless for the longest, especially in the wide-angle lenses that are really optimized for the mirrorless short flange distance. But it also has the CFX-A cards, and they come in a limited capacity, yeah. which we... Only up to 160 gigs. That sounds like a lot, but these are huge files. And then when we travel, we, use, we like to keep all of our pictures on our cards and use it as, like, backup storage. So that's just my workflow. Yeah, and this we'll is put working. 512 gig cards in yeah. the cameras normally, but you can only get up to 160 gig, and that means you're switching them more and you might lose one. But there was a distinct loser. In third place was the Nikon Z9. I wouldn't call it a, dis a distinct loser because notice I haven't mentioned image quality for any of these, and that's because they're all excellent. I don't know if you could even tell which one was which side by side. And Nikon, they got mm -hmm. good glass. They've got a great feel. Yeah. They've got a good user interface. They Those don't. Those lighted buttons. The lighted buttons. Fantastic for astrophotography. Yes, yeah, like low light photography and astro. I love the lighted buttons, but it's so big and heavy. 
It's got that built-in vertical grip. If you want a built-in vertical grip, it's got it. You're going to be happy. If you yeah, don't Yeah, but try want taking it, it for a hike. Or try to try to put that thing away in your bag. Like you have to have a really deep bag if you want to attach it with the lens on it. I considered it a con. You might yeah. consider it a pro, but this is about me. Portraits. We had... Our model Kayla in. Uh, yes. Outdoor, natural light, indoor studio stuff. Mm -hmm. Shot with all three cameras. This one was a tie. A tie between the Alpha 1 and the R5. They were both excellent. I couldn't choose. They had equal pros and cons, and they were both excellent. The, the Canon has the least expensive body, but the glass is more expensive, so I feel like that almost equals mm -hmm. out. Um, I love the Canon 85mm f1.2. Yeah, which not, well, Sony doesn't have that yet. They have an yeah. 85 f1.4, but it's old. The autofocus is, the eye autofocus is very good, so that was great. Mm -hmm. um, and it has the fully articulating screen, which I still like because people are often taller than me and I have to hold it up or I want to be right down low on the ground. It's a great feature to have. Um, the Sony had the best eye auto autofocus, though. Yeah, pretty incredible. If you put them side by side, it was catching the model when she was moving and it was snapping into place faster and more accurately. Some, sometimes the um, Canon would just get like the eyelashes or something, mm -hmm. which doesn't seem like a big deal, but when it's like a sliver thin depth of field, it makes a difference. Yeah, especially at, you know, 45, 50 megapixels, you can actually see the retinas, the iris is just a tiny bit out of focus. Imagine if we could see the retina, though. That'd be <laughs> yeah. crazy. We, we need retina focus on the next one. <laughs> the Nikon, you know what I loved? You can adapt that 105 F1.4, that lens. Oh, is, what a great lens. Oh, such a special lens, and yeah. I really like that. The eye autofocus is good. It still works. It's still better than trying to focus and recompose or move the box all around, mm -hmm. but it does miss sometimes, and it front focuses sometimes. And I know you all think I'm like a liar or something, but I'm just telling you science. No one's We just showed the picture side me. by I, side. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it has the built-in vertical grip, which you might like, again, too heavy for me. And neither of us are in the habit of actually using the vertical grip since we don't really like it. So we ended up holding it like this anyway and not switching our hands. You kept making fun of me and it hurt my feelings. I wasn't. I just knew the commenters would be furious <laughs> to see you holding a camera with the vertical grip. Would you grip guys be mad if you saw me go like that? Probably. And it has a 1 200th sync speed, which is, a, is slower. Like the Canon had a 1 250th and the Alpha 1 has a 1 400th. 1 400th, yeah. In bright light, you, you would have to switch to high speed sync at uh, lower levels, which just burn through the batteries and stuff. Faster sync is better, but it's, it's not better. a deal breaker. It's not a deal breaker. Yeah. And, and then, finally, wildlife, probably yeah. the most important test and the one we put the most time into. That's why it came third, because we wanted two extra months of and shooting wildlife. People wanted me to test more. They were like asking me to do more side-by-side -side stuff. I'm like, oh, we did 35,000 pictures with the Nikon over the course of five months. <laughs> we went out right. just a hundred times, maybe? So many times. They're trying that. to kill me with research. The Z9 had my favorite feature, and that was the pre-capture. So cool. I love the future where it's going with this because I try to get birds right when they take off. You want action. You want something different. That's what makes your photo stand out. And my reaction time as a human is not fast enough. I've been thinking about that. Maybe I need to evolve. But in the meantime, I'll have pre-capture. When the action happens, you press it, and it takes pictures up to a second before that's so cool yeah and genuinely genuinely useful genuinely useful but sometimes it misfocus so it's getting there um and let's see the autofocus was not as the autofocus and tracking were not as good as the alpha one and r5 it jumped to the background a lot sometimes it saw eyes and things like bark and i also found especially with like songbirds up close very shallow depth of field where autofocus precision really matters a lot it frequently front focus, which is the same problem we had with portraits. And that means that my 50 megapixel picture is now not tack sharp where it needs to be. But it still worked overall well. Yeah, um, definitely the best Nikon for wildlife photography. Best Nikon. Better than the D850, which is saying a lot because so that was great. my favorite Nikon so far, but it's still very heavy, especially with the 600 millimeter lens. I was struggling with the weight a little bit, so that's something that I had to consider. Oh, 30 frames per second was also JPEG. I thought that was going to be a much bigger problem because I thought that JPEG files wouldn't have as much dynamic range. Very recoverable, far more than I thought, but not as clean when you recover it. So I'd still want the raw option. Yeah, you better be careful because Jared Pollan will bust through this wall like the Kool-Aid guy. Jared, don't do that. The Sony Alpha 1-1. Mm -hmm. And do you want to know why? Why? 
that autofocus and tracking is just bananas. It's so good. Yeah, after their firmware updates, it has gotten really, really amazing. It will just pick the animal out, even when it's a little bit out of focus, even when it's moving fast, and it will lock onto it and then just track it. Best EVF, yeah. so many dots, so clear, though it does go down in quality when you half press the autofocus button. No rolling shutter, so that's good. Maybe we forgot to mention that. The, the, the Z9 didn't have rolling shutter either, but the R5 really did have oh, a rolling yeah. shutter problem, yeah. And then the Canon, excellent tracking in AF as well. Not quite as good as the Sony in challenging um, situations. A very nice intuitive interface, again, 20 frames per second JPEG, but the worst buffering of all three cameras. Yeah, a lot and of buffering. 20 frames per second comes with the rolling shutter that we were talking about, where you first discovered it with a hummingbird, where the wings were just completely ruined, but also anytime you were panning, you got a lot of like grasses Tilt. in the background being very tilty. Lots of tilty stuff. And then, the yeah. So you could do the mechanical shutter, but that drops you down to 12 frames per second, and that's just, that's not a trade-off you have to make with the Z9 or the A1. I think that's a very workable thing if you're not shooting a lot of wildlife. Yeah. If, while, if you're not shooting a lot of action, you're mostly shooting still stuff, wildlife's not your focus, you just do it sometimes, you're going to be fine. But I like to do it all the time. Before we get into the questions and answers where you ask me questions in the comments and Tony pick them out, let's talk about our sponsor Squarespace because they make your photos look beautiful. You no longer have to have them arranged on your social media in a way that you don't have your best foot forward. Make a great impression, look professional, have a gallery, sell your prints, and you can set it all up in about 10 to 15 minutes. Go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea, use the coupon code Chelsea and get 10% off. That's C-H-E-L-S-E-A. Thanks, Squarespace. And now I'm going to take the questions from the audience, many of whom were furious at your various choices, many of whom thought you They're were so mad at me. deliberately causing cameras to fail the Why test. Why would I do that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Well, first of all, in the wildlife segment, you picked the Canon R5 instead of the Canon R3. And the R3 is actually Canon's flagship. So why not the R3 instead of the R5? Maybe Canon made a mistake. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm joking, it's 24 megapixels. I like higher resolution photos for wildlife because often you have to crop a lot and I, I need that extra info there. R3 is a good camera, it's just not the choice for me. Yeah, and I think the R1 will fill in this gap. It will oh. be high megapixel with all the focusing systems and that will probably be your next switching series. No. Later this year, <laughs> subscribe to see that. No more tests. Okay, similarly, why in the travel segment did you use the Nikon Z9, which is big and bulky, instead of the Nikon Z7, which has the same megapixels and a smaller body? Okay, because I should have explained this better to y'all, and I'm very sorry, but I knew that they'd have to compete in wildlife, right? I want the same one camera for everything, and the Z7 wouldn't have held up very well. So that's why. I agree with you. The Z7 would be a better option for travel and landscape, but um, I'm not even primarily doing that, so... When you compared the cost of the cameras, you did not add in the cost of buying a vertical grip for the Canon R5 or Sony A1, even though it comes free with the Nikon Z9. That's a good point. If you want a vertical grip, then the Z9 has one built in for free and you can't take it off and that would be a good bargain for you. I don't want the vertical grip, so I didn't consider that, but thanks for bringing it to my attention for everyone else. <laughs> Okay, wildlife on the Nikon Z9. We showed a segment mm. of screen captures that showed it jumping off to the background a lot, failing to properly track, especially flying birds. You used 3D tracking in the examples that you showed, but people said you should have been using wide area AF, and thus all the problems were mm. user error, not the fault of the nearly perfect Nikon oh, Z9. Everybody always thinks it's user error. <laughs> yeah. Um, ouch. I, we, I did use that. I used a bunch. So what you don't see, thankfully for you, because it would be horrifically boring, mm -hmm. is that we do all of this testing. We check all of the modes, and we were shooting with it for months and months, and then we have to just condense it all down to an informational but entertaining video, and so we don't show everything. But we did test it. The 3D tracking worked the best. I wanted you to see the Z9 with its best foot forward. I actually try to make all of the cameras look as good as possible, and it's because I want them to work well, and I also don't want everyone attacking me. It's really a lot of pressure. I tried my best to show you it working its best, so that's that. The problem I had with wide area F on the Z9 with flying birds is you, you don't pick your autofocus point. You let the camera do it with, with wide area AF, yeah. and it would occasionally jump onto the background, but then 
when it was on the background, it was impossible to get it to focus back on the foreground where the bird is. So with 3D tracking, it was a single point, and if it lost it, I could get back to the subject. With white area AF, AF, it was like gone completely, and I just found it too frustrating. People also nitpicked your lens choice for oh, the Nikon yeah. Z9, attributing all your problems to the fact that you were using their 600 f4, which is not an old lens, but it's a DSLR lens that used the FTZ adapter mm. to connect to the Z9. Yeah, this is a tough one, actually. Um, okay, so I have to compare three cameras. So you would want to put similar lenses with focal lengths and aperture. Um, but this was tough because I also wanted to test the, the new 800 millimeter lens. Yeah, the for uh, the Nikon PF 6.3. Yeah, that looked really cool, but then I thought that'd be an unfair advantage to the Canon and the Sony, and also I couldn't get one. Um, I tried to make it as fair as possible. There are three lenses, they're the same focal length, they're the same aperture, and um, the 600 f4 for the Nikon is fairly new. It's not a slow lens, and also the lens would not impact um, the tracking because that's done in the camera. The only thing, the motor, a, a slow motor on the lens would make it so that um, it wasn't catching focus like this way as fast, and that's not the problem that I was having. So I don't think the problems that you were seeing were the lens. That having been said, I do want to test the 400 and the 800. I can't get them now, and neither can you probably, but when they're available, well, I would test them. Yeah, absolutely. We'll happily test those things. And I'll add that the examples you saw from the Canon R5 subject tracking, those were filmed with a lens from 1999. And the subject tracking was fine because the lens does not interfere with subject tracking. Like you yeah. said, that is determined entirely by the body. So those problems with subject tracking were not indeed caused by the lens. But I'll, you know what, when I test the 400 and the 800, I'll put it against the 600. And if those problems were caused by the 600, which I really do not think they are, I will update the video. Like I'll put pin a comment, I'll make a new video, I'll update everything that I said. Yeah, and I do appreciate people reaching out saying, hey, maybe it'll perform better yeah. this way. Now, in this case, these were all factors that we had considered, but occasionally people do throw us some bit of advice, a tip that does change the performance. And we always go back and we make an update to make sure that people understand what the real performance is. Yeah. Speaking of wildlife, you did not mention in the Nikon Z9 review that it could shoot 120 frames per second. That's a feature neither of the other two cameras have. I should have mentioned that. But I didn't because it only gets 12 megapixels at 120 frames and I want higher resolution for wildlife photos, but that'd be good for sports. And um, I should have brought that up, so I apologize. Um, and a question for me. In our landscapes and travel video, I used the Nikon Z9 to get a lot of the A-roll, like you talking to the camera. Yeah. It was not part of the review. I was not intending to review it for video. I just thought it would be a good video camera because I read really positive things about how well the autofocus tracking worked. And it turned out it didn't work that well. And so a lot of our A-roll was screwed up and out of focus and frustrating to watch because it was hunting in and out. And we ended up refilming several segments and I did my best to edit around it, like cover the out of focus parts with B-roll. But there were parts we couldn't go back and refilm. And so I had to just use out of focus video, which is a painful thing for a videographer to do. So I wrote an explanation saying, this is the Z9 video autofocus, it's, it's actually really a problem. It was the first time, I'd, and last time, I've used it to film anything, but people took me showing the behind the scenes problems as some sort of assault Light. on Nikon, mm -hmm. like I wasn't treating it fairly, especially because there was also a scene where the R5 missed focus, but I, I didn't think that was that big of a deal and it just happened in one little quick scene. Anyway, I was just trying to, to explain why the videography was so bad and bring people behind the scenes uh, it was not a direct attack on Nikon. But incidentally, the video autofocus on the Z9 is frustrating. Yeah. I wouldn't use it. Maybe in the future you can just always blame yourself since that's going to happen anyway. Just yeah. submit. <laughs> just submit. <laughs> oh, gosh. Now I have to tell you my choice. Tony. It's time. Pick one already. <laughs> oh, my God. It's been months. <laughs> and I really well, for which you. Which is it? I know. Uh, well, all of the cameras are very good. I don't think you could get any of these and be disappointed. They're all excellent, but I chose the Sony Alpha 1 because I shoot a lot of wildlife. I haven't been traveling very much lately and I don't shoot as many portraits, so this makes sense for me. So that's it now. I guess we have to get another A1 because oh. we only have the one. And then what? 
all new lenses or are we just going to be fighting over them all the time? I don't know. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll work it out. We can head over to uh, Milford Photo. And KEH. And... <laughs> yeah. Find some new care. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for watching. If you have more questions, you can ask them down in the comments below. Do you think I made the right choice? Tell me if I'm wrong and flawed. <laughs> All right. See you next time. And thank you to our sponsor, yeah. Squarespace, which makes beautiful websites really, really easy. Just right now, head to squarespace.com slash Chelsea and set up a website for your business, for your personal project, your photo or video portfolio. Yeah. Set up a store, take appointments from clients, view detailed analytics to see how people are getting to your site. I promise it blows social media out of the water. You can control your brand and how everything looks, and there'll be no ads from your competitors. So again, squarespace.com slash Chelsea. Try it for free. And when you love it, use the coupon code Chelsea, and you'll get 10% off. Thanks for sponsoring this, Squarespace. Bye. See you all next time. Bye.